they like that Nancy's name is associated with it or not. But the real test is that if you, if they were, those who understand what's at stake when we talk about the ment of caduce of his majesty and this other, this other Bible, ones understand what's at stake and you were to be on a deserted island or someplace and you had a choice between the two, between his majesty's 1961 the Mets of Caduce right here, you understand, of his imperial majesty, Book of the Seven Seals, the Emperor's Bible, which is which is a very a very high and refined form of Amharic too. You know, if you've seen the different sorts of Amharic um, translating and writing, and you can really appreciate love, you know, Amharic as one would appreciate love English and say, oh, that particular uh, that's a, a certain type of speech that maybe these people speak this particular way or this class of people or they spoke this way in a certain zemin or in a certain age, you know. But then when you compare it with the so-called Kelel uh, Bala Amarinya Targum, you can tell that there's a whole different level of language. You know, there's a whole different level of language there. That one is truly, and, and I think we need to give a couple of examples. I think it's really, really important to perhaps go into a few, a few examples right here. And let us, uh, let's clear this, uh, this, this dry erase um, board, and let's get in a couple of examples to demonstrate, if we can, why we say that the, 1980 so-called um, Amharic or new, they call it the new translation, you know, because what they want to suppress is suppress the truth of his imperial majesty's Bible. And also they want to weaken the faith of the Ethiopians. This is all about weakening the faith. Now, many people will say, well, it's an easier translation. And we will say, well, you're not working hard enough. You're not seeking to know your own roots and your own truth. Let's look at Genesis for a moment. Now what's interesting is that there's some places where you can see clearly where this so-called new Bible, this new Bible borrows heavily from the Mets of Caduce, from His Majesty's Bible. There's, there are some obvious evidences of that throughout the text. And this is more like what they call it not just reading, but it's more like reading comprehension. It's like reading comprehension and also um, language appreciation, appreciation of language and understanding how language is, 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 is the key. So when we study His Majesty's process or the process that we get to the Mets of Kedus, when we study the, the um, progression, we learn that what was from the Gutas or Ethiopia's receiving the Old Testament of the Bible in, in ancient times, Solomon and Sheba, and even some say prior to that with the Beit Israel and with Moses even. Um, and then a New Testament time before other nations. But now what we have, we have a kind of a covert, it's like a covert, it's a, it's a spiritual warfare. It's a covert spiritual warfare that is aimed at the, 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 the spiritual heart of the people. And it's, it's using the word of God, in that sense, as a weapon and using bad translation, very bad translation. Translation is bad, not just from a so-called language perspective, you know, but, but that is not rooted in the true ancient divine heritage of the Ethiopian church. And let's get into some of it right here. Let's clear this, because we already touched on this particular point right here. And let's look at Genesis. Let's, let's look at the first couple of verses in Genesis. All right? Um, how, should we, how should we do this? Let's look at the first couple of verses in uh, Genesis. And let us put over here, um, let's put over here the the H I M right Amharic Bible and then let's put the Pope 
But that's what it is. The good news or the slash good news Bible, the GNB, if you will. All right? And we're going to look at Genesis. We're going to see where, where the two agree and where they disagree. And let's remember that His Majesty's Bible, just as it says, as the Word of God is purified, just like the metal is purified in the furnace of fire seven times seven times. Let's understand that. Let's overstand that. As we taught in another lecture concerning um, what's interesting about King James Bible and His Majesty's Bible in their respective, you know, in their respective histories is that it went through seven processes, almost like seven, we got, not going to say translations, but seven purification, just like that Word of God likening to the gold or the silver that's tried in the furnace of fire until it's purified, until it's refined, until it, it expresses the, the word. And we're speaking about expressing the, the essence of the testimony of Jesus Christos and the word of God, the commandment of God, and that purity so that when, 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 the, when the dead letter is spoken in spirit and in truth, the those who are sleeping can wake and can hear and can understand. And when they study it, there's even more that can be learned. And you know that we've been um, studying the Metz of Caduceus, His Majesty's Bible, the Emperor's Bible, alongside some of the, the most high-powered um, uh, Bible study software out there. You understand? Both of them, Hark, the IOTA, uses His Majesty's Bible very wisely, the 1954-AM or slash 1961-AD, because in the Ethiopia, I met the Mehiret, it was 1950, 1954. Now, those who put forward this uh, Good News Bible, as we said before, a very easy thing to do if you really want to understand this new